I'm Krista Brady, and today I'll be teaching you about the muscles that move the scapula and the humerus. Let's start with the muscles that move the scapula. Remember, when you first look at a model or a chart, you always want to determine which side is the superficial side and which side is the deep side. So looking at this model, you can see on one side, you can see the bone, and on the other side, it's covered up. So that's a nice, easy clue for you that this side with the bone, that's got to be the deeper side. But what if you couldn't see that? What if you were just looking at the torso back here? Well, see this nice, big, kite-shaped muscle? This muscle is trapezius, and trapezius is a very superficial muscle. So if you see trapezius, then you know you've got to be on the superficial side of the model. Trapezius is one of the, uh, one of the muscles that will move the scapula, so it takes its origin all along the spine and from the occipital bone, and then it inserts on multiple places along the scapula. And it's a huge muscle. Huge muscles like this often have multiple actions that they can do. So trapezius can elevate the scapula, helping you to shrug your shoulders. It can retract the scapula, pulling it back. It can depress the scapula, moving it inferiorly and it can also adduct the scapula, moving it closer to the midline. Another muscle that can move the scapula is on the deeper side here. It's this small straight muscle right here, and it's going to take its origin um, from the temporal bone up here and then come down and insert on the scapula. And it has one action that it does, which is to elevate the scapula. Its name is levator scapulae. So it's actually named for its action, what it does. It elevates the scapula. Coming around to the front, the anterior of this model, we have this muscle along the side. It has multiple origins along uh, many of the ribs here, and it has this serrated or sawtooth-like appearance. And it's called serratus anterior because of that appearance. Serratus anterior takes its origin from these ribs and then comes back and inserts on the medial side of the scapula. So because of where it inserts, it can protract the scapula and it can also adduct the scapula. It pulls it away from the midline a bit as it contracts. So that is serratus anterior. Right up above it is this other muscle that also takes its origin from the ribs here, ribs two through five, and then it comes in and it inserts on the coracoid process of the scapula right up under here. And so when it contracts, this is pectoralis minor, pectoralis minor. When pectoralis minor contracts, it's going to protract the scapula, just like serratus anterior, but it's also going to help depress the scapula because it inserts up here. So if you move that insertion towards those origins, that's going to depress the scapula, move it downwards. So these muscles, particularly serratus anterior, this is one that boxers would use a lot as they're throwing those punches. And so that becomes very well defined in boxers. Two other muscles that move the scapula are rhomboidus major right here and rhomboidus minor, just superior to it. You'll notice that there are a couple of pairs of muscles that are called major and minor. Um, and in most of these pairs, the minor muscle is going to be situated superiorly to the major muscle. So you could say that the minor muscle is sitting in the lap of the major muscle. These two, rhomboidus major and minor, are going to do the same thing as each other. So they both take their origin from the spinous processes of these vertebrae and then insert on the medial border of the scapula. So moving that insertion towards that origin that's going to help retract and adduct the scapula, move it closer to the midline. Now let's talk about the muscles that move the humerus. One of these muscles is this big, huge muscle that covers the uh, anterior superior part of your thoracic region. This is called pectoralis major, pectoralis major. So when people are working on their pecs, this is usually the muscle they're talking about, okay? And so this big muscle is gonna take its origin all along the sternum, part of the clavicle and the fascia of the um, other muscles down here. And then it's going to come around 
and insert on the greater tubercle of the humerus. So it's because it's a big muscle, it has a lot of actions it can do. It can flex the arm. Pectoralis major can also medially rotate the arm. It turns that inwards towards the midline. Uh, and that's, a, that's an action that it does more strongly. And it can also adduct the humerus as well. Moving along to the posterior side of the torso, we have this big, huge muscle right along here. This is latissimus dorsi. So this one is also a big, huge muscle, so it's also going to have multiple actions. It comes around and inserts on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. And so it's going to be the prime mover of arm extension and hyperextension. So it's great for that swimming motion. And so swimmers typically get very well muscled um, or very well built latissimus dorsi muscles. So it, it extends and hyperextends the arm. It also medially rotates and adducts the arm. It brings it closer to the midline. Now, moving over to the deeper side of the model, we have several muscles over here that we're gonna talk about that help stabilize the shoulder joint. So these are the rotator cuff muscles. First of all, this one that is superior to the scapula, it takes its origin from the supraspinous fossa of the scapula and then it comes down and inserts on the greater tubercle of the humerus. So because it takes its origin from that supraspinous fossa, it is called supraspinatus. And its job is to abduct the humerus. It's going to, um, it's going to take that humerus away from the midline. Down below the scapular spine, you have this large muscle, or this uh, larger muscle, infraspinatus. Infraspinatus takes its origin from the infraspinous fossa, which is where it gets its name. And it also is going to come around and insert on that greater tubercle of the humerus. Because of where it inserts on that greater tubercle, it's going to laterally rotate the arm. It turns, rotates that arm towards the outside, away from the midline. Right underneath it, there's this little muscle right here that wants to be just like infraspinatus. This little muscle here is called teres minor. So teres minor is also gonna come around and insert on that greater tubercle of the humerus, and it also laterally rotates the humerus. The last rotator cuff muscle is, we're going to look at on this model of the arm here because it is a deeper muscle. It's on the anterior side of the scapula, and it takes its origin from the subscapular fossa. So its name is subscapularis. It's going to insert on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. And when you move that insertion towards that origin, that the action of subscapularis will be to medially rotate the arm. Another muscle that moves the humerus. So this is not one of the rotator cuff muscles. We already covered those. This one is teres major, so it's right underneath teres minor, but it's going to do something different. Teres major is going to come around underneath the armpit through the axillary region, and then it's going to insert on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. So moving that insertion towards that origin, teres major is actually going to medially rotate the arm. So it is the opposite of what teres minor does. It also can adduct the arm, bring it closer to the midline. And then the last muscle we'll talk about that moves the humerus is deltoid. So deltoid is this big muscle right here over the shoulder. So it takes its origin from the scapula and comes down and inserts on the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. And because it's a relatively large muscle, it does have a lot of actions. But the action that, um, one of the main actions that you should know is that it is going to abduct the arm. It's going to bring that arm away from the midline. Today, I taught you about the muscles that move the scapula, including trapezius, levator scapulae, serratus anterior, and pectoralis minor, as well as rhomboidius major and rhomboidius minor. And I've also taught you about the muscles that move the humerus. 
including pectoralis major, right here, latissimus dorsi, the rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis, and then a couple other muscles, teres major right here, and deltoid, this big muscle all along there. Now go ahead and practice these muscles using the labeled and unlabeled images provided, and then you can apply these on the lab exercises.